Greetings brothers, today we're talking about five reasons that you need to consider including a utility librarian in your next army list. Welcome to the Weekly Tactics video. If you're new here, I'm John, the Blood Angels Commander. Every week we have Blood Angels content on this channel, so please consider subscribing. And thank you very much to all my regular viewers. So number one is profile. Now, if you want to make a utility librarian, you can use the regular librarian, the Primaris librarian, or the librarian in Terminate Armour. There's only slight differences between them and there is some point cost. So the Primaris librarian has one additional attack and one additional wound over our regular librarian. They both have the three up save. And then the librarian in Terminator armor also has that additional wound and he has the two plus, five plus invulnerable save that is given from Terminator armor. He also can do deep strike into the battlefield with his Terminator strike. So that's kind of the, the profiles as it is. And then the only other thing to say is uh, four swords, four axes, or four staffs. As with the Sanguinary Guard, there's always a debate between swords and axes, but swords will math hammer better, and we'll get to that later in the video. So if you talk about the reasons to include this utility librarian, the main reason that as well as Smite, he'll be able to pick two powers from either the Librarian Discipline or the Sanguinary Discipline. So that gives him 12 powers to pick from. We can pay 25 points to make him the Chief Librarian. He will then know three powers. We can take the Relic, the Tomb of Malachor, so he will then know four powers. If we do this, um, he will be able to cast two and also deny two every turn. And then the, there is the Blood Angel specific Spiritual Might to let us cast an additional power for one CP. So potentially you can cast three of the four plus Might you know every turn. Finally, there is two other things. One is a Warlord trait, which is the Psychic Mastery, which would add one to all your Psychic Tests. And then there is also a Staff that you can replace called Galleon Staff. It is a Blood Angel specific relic, and it will give you one plus to your Psychic powers from the Sanguinary Discipline. But I think um, the better relic here is definitely the Tomb of Malachor. So let's talk about the key powers from each discipline. I've picked four, um, and then in the Sanguinian discipline, it's Unleashed Rage, Wings of Sanguinius, Shield of Sanguinius, and also um, Quickening. So sort of like a couple self-casts and a couple of buffs. Uh, the Sanguinary discipline, in my opinion, is generally good, but where this uh, character really comes into his own is because of the access to Librarius discipline. So Librarius discipline is very important against certain armies. Veil of Time, gives you an 18 inch ability that lets your units reroll charges and fight first. I mean, we can all see the value in that. We also get Null Zone, which has the ability to remove invulnerable saves around the Psyker and make it harder for enemies to pass Psychic Tests. I mean, this has a negative if you did pick the Librarian in Terminate Armour and that you would lose your own invulnerable save or any of your other units that are around there. But remember, Sanguinary Guard, Death Company, these guys don't have invulnerable saves, so it synergizes really nicely with those. The other two, I suppose, you can have are Might of Heroes, if you wanted to buff a character um, or himself. And then finally, we talk about Psychic Fortress, which is our bubble of any units within six, get that five plus invulnerable save. It can be very handy if you have some armor that maybe doesn't have an invulnerable save or some other units like the Sanguary Guard that don't have an invulnerable save and you just want to buff them for a turn. So if you are gonna run this librarian, then the top picks really are your Veil of Time, your Unleashed Rage, uh, your Null Zone, and then probably like Shield of Sanguinius or the Psychic Fortress. And then if you did take the Primaris Librarian or the Librarian in Terminator Armor, the less mobile ones, without the jump pack potentially, then you're probably going to need to take Wings of Sanguinius. But that might not be so much of a problem if this character has the ability to take four powers. So I've built two builds and they both come in at 140 points and it's Librarian with the Jump Pack and the Librarian in Terminator Armor and they've both been made the Chief uh, Librarian. So we will equip them with a Force Axe or Sword. Uh, the Librarian with the Jump Pack will have the Veil of Time. He will have the Null Zone. He'll have the uh, Unleash Rage. He can take Psychic Mastery or you could take Iron Resolve if you need him to be a bit survivable. And then you could also take Tomb of Malachor if there was a fourth power you really felt or maybe Armor Indomitus if you just want him to survive a little bit longer if he does get caught up in combat. So next it would be Librarian and Terminator Armor and what he loses in mobility I guess he gains in survivability so uh, it's kind of a straight trade-off. So for this build we've taken a combi Melta. It's quite nice to just randomly shoot off a Melta shot every turn if you are going to be up close in close combat. You know a Melta gun can do potentially 8 damage so uh, it wouldn't do it very often but it's nice to have that option. 
Um, he again has his axe or his sword, uh, he has the Veil of Time for the charges, he has the Null Zone for the Invulnerable save removal, Unleash Rage or Quickening. Uh, we're going to take Wings on this guy for sure because we want him to be mobile. So I guess for his Relic we would just take the Tomb of Malachor. He doesn't really need armor and Domitus like the other one potentially needed because he already has that armor. And then again for his Warlord trait we could take Iron Resolve or Psychic Mastery. Situational depending on if you want him to survive or if you just want him to be pure utility getting those Psychic Tests off every turn. So yeah, then what we've done is we've looked at number 5, which is our Math Hammer, and we always look at survivability and damage, so we'll start with survivability this week. And what I've done, again, is just put the best values in the green, so you can see straight away your Terminator uh, Librarian with Iron Resolve is going to be the more su most survivable. However, your Librarian with Iron Resolve can do okay with an Armor Indomitus, he can do okay as well. I mean, he'd be a little bit squishier, but I guess because... You could tend potentially have four powers that were all about buffing and um, yeah you know like it's just a little bit more flexible in terms of his powers because you don't have to spend one power to take those wings but you do give up some of maybe maybe you don't want him to charge in maybe you want him to just sit out of combat and do his thing what I've also done here is I've put in Mephiston because we looked at Mephiston a few weeks ago we compared him against the Librarian Dreadnought so I just wanted you to see how he compares or how these both compare against Mephiston. So the guy in Terminator Armour isn't a million miles away from Mephiston um, and the Librarian I guess is quite a bit away from Mephiston but we knew that so I mean if you're going to take that Terminator Armour I think it does let you engage into combat I guess you'd have to just pick your fights wisely because the enemy would realise how much uh, buffage you are bringing to the battlefield so maybe you only want to fight like into enemy marines or something you wouldn't want to engage into any sort of like heavy target or character hey if you're getting any value out of the video please hit the like button so then finally we put in the math hammer for the damage and these guys are reasonably weak you know they just have three attacks so i really feel like if you want them to be doing some damage you're probably going to need to take quickening we already said that was going to be very risky on a regular librarian maybe a little bit less on the cheat uh, librarian terminator armor but the columns in green and yellow show the damage and it is clear here that swords perform better than axes for this character against all the tests that i run and I have all those put mephiston in there as well even though he's a psyker these guys are uh, filling a very different role in the battlefield so while mephiston is a psyker that very much focuses on just going forward and doing damage these psykers can perform uh, very different uh, utilities that i think in the top play and against certain armies are going to be really really important if you do take quickening though, I mean you can do some okay damage, I mean you'll be able to kill a couple of marines a turn, so maybe there is some play there, uh, I suppose it depends on how many of the other powers you need to be, are you, are you able to be flexible with them before the battle starts. So the reason I wanted to cover this was because I've seen a lot of very highly competitive Blood Angels army lists and a lot of the top players are taking this Librarian over the Librarian Dreadnought or Mephiston and using him, uh, they're using the Librarian with the Jump Pack very commonly. I thought I'd throw in that one with the Terminator armor just because a lot of people uh, rely a lot of Deep Strike on the Blood Angels army and having the Librarian in the Terminator armor gives you that option to have him join whatever Deep Striking you are doing. So a regular Librarian with the Jump Pack is going to be sort of key of utility. Uh, you don't have to worry about him failing essentially a Wings test um, and he can take Psychic Mastery. He's just not going to be a combat character in any, any shape or form so you just try and keep him out of combat, keep him within 3 inches of squad, never let him be the closest target to the enemy and really run him like that. We have shown if you do take Quickening and you have got that Four Sword then you can do some damage and that, that's the same for I guess uh, your Terminator Armor Librarian and your Primaris Librarian. So if you're not super serious as competitive, you could maybe consider a Librarian in Terminator Armor. I got one right here, you can see. And um, yeah, I mean, he can be a bit survivable with Iron Resolve and uh, he can do some damage if you did take Quickening. Obviously, you're going to have to take Wings, but we are talking about he does have four powers. I mean, I guess if you take Wings and Quickening, then you could take two buffs. Uh, you could still take that Veil of Time, you could still take that Null Zone, and I guess he could still be fairly usable. Um, it's hard to put value on uh, Psychic Mastery versus Iron Resolve because I seem to always roll Perils, so I really like having a way to ignore some of those uh, Perils of the Warp rolls. So we looked at Librarian Dreadnought and Mephiston a few weeks ago, I'll put the video up here, and they are really our raw damage dealers for Psychic. Uh, Librarian Dreadnought is just... Uh, 
horrendous when he has those 10 attacks and um, yeah I mean if you want to just do damage then that's what you want to pick but if you're playing in a more competitive meta where you need some more utility to do stuff and win games then the utility librarian is definitely going to have to be something that you're going to consider because I don't know if we have enough tools to uh, to deal with every army. You know, if you just talk about raw damage, raw damage is great, but you will come up against some uh, armies where raw damage will get unstuck. So the utility librarian probably fills a better place. Um, if you were going to a tournament, for example, that would probably be the better pick. So leave me a comment below on are you already running utility librarian? Which of the, th the four options that I showed you are you going to pick? What psychic powers do you think are strongest and why? Or do you still just love the librarian Dreadnought or Mephiston and uh, let me know the psychic power choices that you like on them as well? It was only a month ago now that we opened a membership and we've had a decent amount of members join. So thank you very much for that. Your support means a lot and we'll be looking at getting back to live games as soon as possible. So we'll be back on Sunday for a weekly live show at 4pm UK time. If you want to leave me your army list so we can review it on a future stream, then head over to the community page of the YouTube channel and post it in there today. Thank you so much for watching. There are plenty of other videos on the channel if you want to check them out now. And if not, I'll see you again very soon. By the blood are we made, brothers. Peace.